Hi there, thank you so much for joining me again on this channel. I'm so grateful for all your likes, subscriptions and views from the last video. Um, what we're going to do today is to spend some time uh, just thinking about stained glass windows. Uh, and one of the things I've always thought about stained glass windows is how they're like early comic books. OK, they're a way of telling a story. And one of the things which I had absolutely no idea about until I was putting this together was that uh, stained glass windows uh, could be referred to as a poor man's Bible and I had honestly I just did not know this when I was uh, piecing this uh, video together uh, yes there is some planning that goes in I know they look very ramshackle but you, uh, I'm trying I'm trying uh, and what we've got here is this fact that um, it was a way of communicating the Christian message to the masses literacy levels were not very high because basically you only had an education if you were rich and wealthy and uh, the uh, stained glass windows were a way of teaching people about the gospel what i find also fascinating is how uh, when you look at comic books uh, sometimes their sin as uh, a poor form of literature or a poor form of artwork uh, and uh, I'm sure someone who's a lot smarter than me can perhaps write a thesis on it or some sort of paper but um, before I go down another tangent what I do want to say is that stained glass uh, is often associated with Christianity when we talk about stained glass it's just the way our language has, has, has evolved and, and, and is working um, but other religious traditions have stained glass particularly the Islamic tradition some of the mosques are absolutely beautiful and I think what I might do is perhaps do a, a, a video about Islamic art and bring that all together under that one umbrella but as always uh, we need to crack on uh, I went to Google Earth because as you know I like to use YouTube and Google Slides it's all part of that same ecosystem don't worry Apple users you're welcome we're an inclusive channel um, so uh, we're at King's College Chapel which was started in the 1400s in Cambridge in England and uh, as for lots of places of worship, there's a very nice little website here and it's got a really fantastic virtual tour of the chapel. And King's College is particularly famous for its carol service, uh, which is uh, every year and uh, is broadcast uh, to the nation and uh, and beyond so that's something just to be aware of as well and uh, many people see it as a very important part of their tradition uh, and uh, many this is huge queues outside to go and get into the college but what we've got here is we need to talk about the east window and the east window really is quite something and here it is uh, i found a beautiful image online uh through Flickr where i was able to to, to use uh, for educational purposes uh, and it was built between 1515 and about 1531 uh, by uh, Dutch glaziers and it's an absolutely stunning piece of work and what you have here is uh, the passion of the effect what you have is the crucifixion okay uh, and um, one of the things that really uh, stands out is obviously the very vivid colours and it's uh, very difficult to find a photo that was able to show that but imagine there you are you walk in and uh, you have this extraordinary image uh, in front of you uh, as a worshipper remember uh, you, you can't read um, and going to church would have been uh, an extraordinary experience uh, particularly before the reformation in england you would have had the smells of the incense you would have had the singing of the choir you would have had um, this uh, eating of the, the, the communion, the, the mass, the bread and the wine and the drinking, but also this extraordinary visual splendour. So it was a, all senses were assaulted. And what I didn't know was this. I was, I was having a look at this and just poking around and thinking, well, yes, it's the uh, crucifixion of Jesus, but what else is going on? And uh, you'll see here there is uh, a figure, a, a joiner, so someone uh, uh, who was involved in woodwork. And what's really interesting is that there's a theory, because at this time uh, when the window was put together, there was a fashion for uh, getting people to to flesh out the Bible stories, to add little extra characters. We maybe think it's quite a modern thing, but actually they like to uh, 
do a little bit of empathy work as well. So or imagine you were there standing at the cross. How would you feel? And it's very interesting that this sort of uh, almost kind of creepy looking joiner is here. So uh, the guy who perhaps put the cross together or was helping to nail Jesus or maybe handed the nails to the Roman soldiers. Uh, is there so I thought that was a really interesting and of course you've got the classic symbols there that we would associate uh, with the crucifixion so of course you've got the cross you've got two uh, criminals either side you've got uh, the Latin there of here is Jesus king of the Jews okay you've got women weeping um, all sorts of things going on and uh, it really is something quite to behold it's amazing to think as well uh, the age of this particular piece so there we are uh, king's college chapel and um, the next one i wanted to look at if i may uh because it was world famous uh king's college chapel but here's this one it's a tiny little village okay uh in kent as a tiny place called chillum and it's just a very small church okay again nice little website for it uh, and that's worth checking out as well and uh if you ask people to think of a church most people would probably think of something like this uh you know nice white wedding uh maybe when it's snowing have a little christmas card scene uh all fairly uh you know, traditional um but one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this is because it's got an extraordinary stained glass window. Uh, and this was uh, not in from the Middle Ages, but was actually from the Victorian era, uh, 1864. And what you have is uh, a very particular style. Where you have scenes from the Old Testament and then scenes from the New Testament. So what you have down here is you have this five parts, as it were. And in the bottom left, you have Jeremiah in a pit. And then above him, you have the scene of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, praying to God. And you know, if there's any other way, take this cup from me. OK, uh, and then you have under here, uh, you have Abraham about to sacrifice Isaac. OK, and the symbolism there of giving up your own son uh, for the greater good. And there you have uh, Jesus carrying the cross through the streets of Jerusalem. Then from the Old Testament, uh, you have uh, the story of the Passover, uh, when the Jews fled from Egypt and they painted the lamb's blood on the door. OK, then you have Jesus above that being crucified. So Jesus is often referred to as the Lamb of God, another powerful symbol there. Uh, then you have here, um, uh, it's Jonah emerging from the uh big fish not well big fish uh and there is jesus and the resurrection emerging okay jonah was in the big fish for three days jesus was in the tomb for three days uh and then you also have here uh elijah going up to heaven and uh, jesus also ascending into heaven uh after he'd revealed himself to the disciples and given them some more teachings so um it really is quite something and uh lots of symbolism there and I just thought it was really interesting. You have the Old Testament and the New Testament there. And for Christians, they will point to the fact that in the Old Testament, there are lots of symbols that point to the life of Jesus. And uh, that's a lovely illustration of that. But I wanted to go global as well. And the final stained glass window, which uh, I thought really was quite something uh, and actually a little bit more modern from 1971, which is still a long time ago. Uh, but uh, uh, certainly only from the latter part of last century, is uh, the Iglesia El Rosario, which is a church in El Salvador, which is in Central America. And what I love about this stained glass is its simplicity. So first of all, uh, you've got uh, this remarkable, uh, above the altar, this sort of steel umbrella-like structure, which is quite something I've never seen before. And I'm not sure what that symbolises, being honest with you. Um, so maybe that's something you want to think about uh, uh, and reflect upon. But what I love is this stained glass window here creating a rainbow effect. Uh, and rainbow is actually very important in Christianity. Uh, if you think as well about uh, after the flood where uh, God said to Noah, uh, you know, I'm no longer going to flood the earth. So here's a rainbow as a sign of my covenant. Uh, but I thought it was helpful as well just to see a different type of stained glass because what you have is rather than uh, direct images, you have colour. Uh, and I think that really adds to the, to the ambience and the feel in some way. 
So uh, thank you so much as always for your patience. Uh, I would encourage you uh, just to have a look around uh, on Google at stained glass windows as various cathedrals to have a look at. Uh, use Google Earth to explore and really think about the symbolism of those stained glass windows and what can be learnt about the Christian faith from them. Until then, uh, amongst yourselves, feel free to chat. Also, like and subscribe. And as always, enjoy your learning. Thank you.